the vast open plains of Mongolia speak of an ancient history, of a land that has endured unchanged through generations. On the mighty steppe, an age-old nomadic lifestyle is still commonplace. Mongolia is known for its natural beauty. And this guy, the mighty Chinggis Khan. But what Mongolia isn't traditionally known for is opera. But as it turns out, opera is pretty big in Mongolia. In recent years, Mongolia's opera singers have won awards at many international singing competitions, beating more established opera nations like Russia and Italy at their own game. Back home, that success has made opera incredibly popular, even making its way onto reality TV shows. Our opera singers are superstars. The true essential Mongols to touch our tongues and that's we need each. To find out why Mongolian opera is hitting all the right notes, Compass is visiting this unique country and speaking with some of its best known singers. I'll explore opera's historical roots in Mongolia, the connection between singing and the natural landscape. And I'll find out how the recent rise of opera has affected the country's cultural identity. Join me on Compass as I explore the pride of Mongolia. One thing Mongolia has a lot of is space. It's twice the size of France, six times the size of the UK. And with just three million people, it's the most sparsely populated country in the world. In total, Mongolia is about one and a half million square kilometers. Almost half the population lives in Ulaanbaatar. To the south is the Gobi Desert and a huge border with China. To the north is Russia. As you can see, Mongolia is totally landlocked and sandwiched between two geopolitical giants, which is a pretty tough spot to find yourself in. But it was this unique place in the world which set Mongolia on its path to opera success. About 500 kilometers north of here is the border with Russia. It's a country that still has influence despite the fall of communism. This monument was built to promote good relations between the two states. When it comes to opera, that relationship goes back decades. In the 1950s, Mongolia was still a satellite state of the Soviet Union. Moscow was forcefully promoting the classical arts as part of what it called a civilization mission. 
dancers, musicians and singers were sent to the USSR to train. Bayrsakhin Tamzov and Byamsudin Tolamzov are singers who studied and worked during the socialist era. Be Aranga and the winner Samon Tursun, Sirin Dojay, Twicholat, Hossel Toshna Raj, Jawat, Tedi Turtarsa, Euro Tadamoron, Church, Tadamon, be told us in the world of Singer, Teru to Yak, it's a city movie. Тэгээ <laughs> Do you think Mongolian opera carries the Soviet legacy? Yes, it's a socialist movie. It's a very important story. 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 The Sulu with Mana during theatre in Dochta, Sato Dochman did he wrongly near Karach. And one person who makes her especially proud is the gentleman sitting beside her. That's her son, Mongolian tenor Bayr Sahin Bajargo. <laughs> But Jargal is one of the country's biggest opera stars. He's performed on stages all over the world and right now is preparing for a contest in Russia. It was incredible. <clears throat> Thank you so much. What song were you singing? You know, the Alter Tati, which means which Jack Kamapuchini, La Boheme Opera, Alter Tati, which means which Jack Kamapuchini, La Boheme Opera, Alter Tati, which means which Jack Kamapuchini, La Boheme Opera, Alter Tati, which means Anglin USC BBC Cardiff Singer of the World. But Jargal is showing me around his former music school, where many of Mongolia's opera singers trained. Who is this person in the picture? Zain Humbot Mini Atahni, the Namagata village of San Sahitri, the Geeks of Walter Village of San. I am a professor of the University of the University of the University of the University of I'm such a agar, but a catcher, not a garnet, he got a book to the kitchen to the Tamashi hot pot and but the jetty. The girls exhort us or tin door, get what a man on snit or dictate. Tilly got Mashik team hot on the Kuch Chatler was six dollar team. Don't need to look at the book to the hospital at the hospital. Mongol touch the Ayas Chatter of Mashik. 
манай багш төр бол бид ээж орс болгараас одоо их сургуулаа гэж тавьж одоо дулаачийн сургуулийг Монголд авчирсан. The legacy of the training received during that time endures. As does this building built during the Soviet era, the State Opera and Ballet Theater. Hi, nice to meet nice you. To meet My you. name is Tushin Bol. Tushin Bol is the art director for the Opera House. This building now built in 1950, now almost 68 years. The classical art was introduced by Soviet after the Second War, especially the ballet and opera. And we sent to Russia also the students for um, teaching and studying in the classical arts. The government built this uh, opera theater. It wasn't like opera theater, it was art theater. Here was um, opera, ballet, drama, even sometimes a circus. This was kind of art palace. From those roots, the state opera has grown into a world-class company. It has a repertoire of 57 pieces, more than half of which are original Mongolian national operas. More than 270 artists work on the performances for an annual audience of 20,000 people. Why is opera so popular in Mongolia? Mongolian people usually like to sing. In all nations, everybody from child and to older, they sing national songs, not only opera. So it's related to traditional singing styles? Yes, uh, as a um, throw songs is very close to opera. This is kind of step songs, you know, when you uh, sing as a throw songs, it's very beautiful. Throat singing is an ancient style, still practiced by nomads in Mongolia's herding plains. And what better place to explore the connection between the country's traditional forms of singing and its adopted passion for opera? Ихэвчлэн одоо байгалийн дуу чимээ бөгөөд монголчуудын адгуулам болж байгаа таван өшөг мал нь дуу аваг дуурайн дуурах тэдгээрийг одоо дагна дуурайх Сумья Базир Захтовчир is a Mongolian throat singer. За хөөмийн урлаг бол яахын аргагүй одоо байгалийн урлаг энэ байгал нүүдэлчин ах байм дээр та холбоотойгоор одоо үүссэн Яхын аргагүй энэ байгаль л хүмүүс бол одоо холбоотойгоор оршин тогтнож байгаа. Цааш холбоотой байх болно. За Монголчуудын энэ ардын язгуур урлаг буюу одоо уртын дуу, хөөми зэрэг одоо хоолойн урлагууд нь дэлхийн одоо тэр дөөрийн урлагтай бол холбогдно. За энэ нас юугээрээ холбогдох юм бэ гэхээр амьсгаа. Одоо жишээлбэл амьсгаа аав нь хөвлийн амьсгаа. Is Mongolian pride and identity related to singing? Яхан аргагүй одоо Монгол хүний бахархал Монголчуудын бас хэлсэн үг гэдэг штэ. Найрн 3 дуутай, наадамд 3 даваатай гэдэг. Тэгэхээр Монгол хүн болгон ер нь дуулдаг. За хүн бол одоо эрчүүд болгон бол барилддаг. За түүгээрээ ч одоо бас энэ Монгол орны маань бас дөрвөн үлдэрлийн онцлогтой бас холбоотойгоор бас Монголчуудын дуулах хурлаг дуу хоолооны тэр хүч чадал нь бас дагаж одоо бас хөгжиж байдаг юм болов гэж бодож байгаа. Тэр их хөгжил дээр одоо тэр дэлхийн одоо сонгодог урлагийн дэлхийн одоо дуул хурлагийн тэр 
арга баригтай суралцсанаар одоо илүү их хөгжиж илүү олон сайн дууч төрөн гарах их үндсэн нь болж байгаа юм болов уу гэж бодд юм аа монголчуудын одоо дуу хоолой онцлог гэж ярилаа үүнээс гадна монголчуудын одоо уртын дуу монголт хөөмэ гих мэтчлэн одоо яг хүний хоолойн урлагийн одоо бахархал болсон зүйл бол яхан аргагүй уртын дуу гэж тэр тал нутаг шигээ тийм сайхан өргөн дугуралттай цар үрээтэй тийм сайхан аялгуутай байхаас гадна хоолойн олон төрлийн юм одоо нуглаа олон зөрлийн аялгуу Long Song is a central part of traditional singing in Mongolia. The songs can last for hours with lyrics about the natural world. The form evokes the wide open plains of the steppe. Gangkhog Engpata is a long singer. He's performing for a family in a traditional Mongolian home known as a gur. As custom dictates, he's given milk when he arrives, but first he needs to sing for his supper. The milk is passed between each family member or friend, and each person is invited to sing in turn. Bye, Lala. Well, my long singing is not great, but can I just drink the milk? So, I'm going to learn how to do a lot of songs in the future. Үлэгдэж ирсэн мана Монгол ард түмний үнэт төвс соёл давтагдшгүй одоо Монголын сонгодог урлаг Монгол сонгодог юм аа боломж байхгүй сөөсөн л төрхөөсөө морин дэл дээр ихээс төрөл морин дэл дээр өсөж тэр уртынхаа сайхан дуурдал жин сайхан уужим тал хөдөөгөр давх үтэй сэтгэл сайхан тэний чингэж уушигны багтаамж нь хүртэл сайхан тэлжүүж ингэж It's been said that the earth has music for those who listen. And in Mongolia, it's impossible not to hear. There's something really incredible about this landscape. It's easy to see how somewhere so dramatic and beautiful could inspire the same things in a singer. <laughs> А тэгээ тэнгэр тийм болохоор Монгол ордын өртөнд дуу дуулж байгаа хүмүүс бол тийм гоо сэтгэлээр өндөр оюун ухаан шал өөр газар байж идэг. Тэр утгаараа стресс гэж байдаггүй толгойд нь тэр дуу дуулж байхад бол бүх юм яг мартаж тэр нутг устаан холгодчих юм гэдэг. Тэр ч утгаараа одоо өнөөгийн дуурын урлагт манай Монголоос оффера дуу гаргаж ин дэлхий дахинд одоо сайхан сайхан дуулж байгаа хүмүүс байна. Бид нар үзэд арга байхгүй л энэ орон төрсөн орон. Тэр Монгол хүн болж төрсөн орон. Тэгэхээр энэ уртын дуу гэдэг сонсож тэдний үл өссөн хүмүүс. Энэ уртын дуу гэдэг энэ том урлаг Монголын сонгодог энэ аг урлагт бол бүх дуун элемент байдаг. Тэм учраас энэ дуу дуулж эзэмшиж байгаа хүмүүс бол тэр бүх дууны оргил дээр байх гэсэн. Энийг л ганцхан Монгол хүн л дуулж Back in Ulaanbaatar, I've found more evidence that Mongolia is truly a nation of singers. Ever since I arrived in Mongolia, people have been telling me about how much Mongolians love singing. And here is the proof. Roadside karaoke sessions seem a long way from the formal world of opera. But unlike many countries where opera is seen as elitist, in Mongolia it can be a more relaxed experience. If you compare it to other countries, it is very, very casual. People don't dress up as much, but still we try to respect the theater because it's a very respectful uh, part of culture in the city. So, but in terms of just attendance, and if you see everywhere around the audience, it's children, elderly, young people, regular just couples and sometimes just friends. It's a very casual event. It's 
populist appeal is often attributed to original national operas that speak to Mongolian sense of identity and culture. I think the most famous one is the three dramatic characters. It is the most famous. Everybody knows about the story. Everybody knows the songs. If you ask someone in the street, could you sing a verse from the opera, they will sing it for you. Three Dramatic Characters was the first original Mongolian national opera. It's a love story set in the steppe, featuring girls, traditional costumes and some Mongolian wrestling. The uh, story was written by one of our most beloved writers and he's, I think he's the father of our modern um, uh, literature, so everyone knows about it. Adding a distinctly Mongolian flavor to opera appears to be a winning strategy. It's certainly one used to great success by the next performance I'm meeting, Mongolian pop opera group Overture. They're rehearsing for an upcoming tour in Korea. Can you tell us about the song you were rehearsing? I was rehearsing for the first time in the first time. I was rehearsing for the first time in the first time. I was rehearsing for the first time in the first time. I was rehearsing for the first time in Opera so popular in Mongolia at the moment. Overture have released two successful albums and performed all over the world. So what about Overture today? You frequently perform around Mongolia and you have many albums and you're quite popular. What are you guys busy with? So what does the future hold for Overture? Hamtuman <laughs> Chinggis Khan believed that to be a man, one should master archery, horse racing and wrestling. He didn't have as much to say about singing, but I've been told that his grandson, Kublai Khan, had a musical ensemble of over 500 people. Evidence that Mongolians have understood the importance of singing for a very long time. The success of Mongolia's opera singers owes a debt to the Soviet era. 
but it has reached new heights thanks to a rich culture of singing, a deep connection to nature and techniques handed down from generation to generation. Mongolia has forged a unique vision of this classical art that has become the pride of Mongolia.